Hey you guys, it's Paul here and welcome to I Cook and Paint. Today I'm going to show you how to make a South Indian staple called idli. Idlis are savory little steamed cakes that are soft and spongy. They're made from fermented rice and lentils and they're usually eaten with a soup called sambar. I'm going to show you the whole process on how to make idlis from scratch, from fermenting the batter to how to use these idli plates. We're going to look at different ways that you can change up your idlis a little bit before steaming them. And I'm even going to show you how to stuff them with cheese. Ooh, look at that. First, we have to start with rice and lentils. And these are the lentils that you use for idlis. They're known as urid dal. And they're also called split black gram. You can get them in Indian grocery stores. The best type of rice to use for idlis is parboiled rice. It can be raw or cooked, and usually the standard for idli batter is double the rice to urid dal. Now I didn't have parboiled rice, so this here is just regular basmati. And I know these are going to be just as good. We're also going to need a pinch of fenugreek seeds, and you can add them to either the dal or the rice. It doesn't matter. I usually put them into the dal. Okay, now we have to soak each of these separately for a minimum of five hours. And right here, I have some that I've soaked ahead of time. These have been soaking overnight. And I want you to see here how the urid dal has doubled in volume and they've become a lot softer so we can puree them. Now it's a good idea to wash these after they've soaked or even before they've soaked. It's always a good practice to do this no matter what you're cooking because when these grains are being processed at the mill, they can accumulate quite a bit of dirt and dust. So now we'll do the urid dal here. Now we have to puree these separately and it's best to start with the urid dal because it has to be smooth. So add it into a food grinder with just enough water to make grinding it easy. Not too much because we don't want this to be runny. So I'm going to put the cap on and grind away. You could also do this in a food processor if you're making a larger amount. At some point, you're going to want to stop the grinder and do a little scraping so that you get every little grain. I certainly had to do that, but I cut it out of the video because those parts are pretty boring. But after a couple of scrapings and more grinding, this is what my doll ended up looking like. It's smooth and creamy. It kind of looks like hummus. So once the doll is nice and smooth, we can put it into our bowl. Now the rice has to be a little bit more coarse, so we can add it right into the same grinder. And just like with the urid dal, we're going to need a little splash of water to make grinding easier. Remember, you can always add more water, but you can't take it away, so only start with about a tablespoon or so. And like before, you're going to want to stop and scrape a few times to make sure every grain of rice gets chopped up. But this is what your mixture should look like. It should be almost as smooth as the urid dal, but just slightly more coarse. Now we're going to mix the two together. So into a large bowl goes my rice followed by the urid dal. And it's safe to say that most of our work is already done now. This here is your classic idli batter. So mix them until they're well combined. We're gonna have to let this ferment now and it's gonna take probably eight to 10 hours depending on how warm it is where you are. Now I'm gonna cover it with some plastic and let it ferment somewhere warm. Now here's one that I made yesterday and this is what it looks like after it ferments. So as you can see, it doubles in volume. Make sure your bowl is big enough. And I just wanna show you with a spoon here how light and airy the batter becomes. It's really important this ferments somewhere nice and warm. Once you see your batter looks like that, it's time to add some salt. Always add your salt after fermentation, never before. And stir it in gently in just one direction so you don't lose all the aeration. Okay, this looks good. Now we're just about ready to start filling these idli plates. And this is what an idli plate looks like. The batter goes into these little wells on these plates, and then you stack them and then put them in the steamer. It's really important that we apply a little bit of oil to the plates before we put the batter in. And in case you were wondering, you can find these idli plates at most Indian grocery stores. So once they're oiled, you can start adding the batter into the wells. And that's what the consistency should be like, and that's how much goes in. You can make your idlis plain like this, or you can add little toppings on them. And that can be chopped cilantro, some spices, some chutney. I think we're going to do some grated vegetables, so carrot, cabbage. Here I have some finely chopped green beans. There we go, and I think for this one we're going to put all three. So whatever you want. Now this one is my favorite. We're going to do cheese idlis, so only a touch of batter. Then take some grated cheese and put it right in the middle. And now we're going to top it off with more batter. So just place it on top and smooth it out. 
Oh, yay. So I'm going to do that to all of those. There we go. These are going to be good. Now we have to steam these. So here I have a steamer pot with a little stand on the bottom. And I also have water in here so we can cook our idli. So I'm going to put the stand back in. Okay, so now we're going to let this come to a boil on medium heat. And once we see that, we can pop our idlis in. There we go. Right in. Put a lid on it. Now we're gonna let this steam for about 15 minutes. Don't be tempted to open the cover while they're steaming, but after 15 minutes, it's safe to check them and if they spring back when they're lightly pressed like this, you know they're done. So out they come from the steamer and let's have a look at these. Look how nice the veggie idlis look. You can also sprinkle the vegetables on the plate first and then put the batter on top. That looks really nice. And here we have our plain ones. Now you just take a spoon and scoop it out. And this is really easy to do because we grease the plate. And here's our idli, and this here is super soft and spongy. Even though I use basmati rice instead of parboiled, these feel pretty soft. So now I'll give it a taste. Mmm. They're soft and spongy. Really good. Okay, now let's try the cheese ones. We'll just scoop that out. These are really good just like that, but they're super delicious with a little tomato sauce or tomato soup. So I'll just break this open so you can see. It's a lot like a mini grilled cheese sandwich. If you're gluten-free, then you have to make Eadleys. Mmm! Remember guys, by clicking the link underneath this video, you will get the complete printable recipe for these yummy, yummy Eadleys. Thank you all so much for watching I Cook and Paint. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon.